Hello viewers, in this uh, video we'll be solving uh, three questions. Uh, the first one is that to determine, we have a function f of x, we want to determine whether this function is one to one or not. And uh, the b part of the question will be to find the interval where the graph of f inverse lies above the x-axis. Then question number two is to sketch the graph of this function, absolute value of minus 2 to the power minus x minus 1 plus 4. And we're to find the interval where the function is decreasing. And finally, we're to sketch the graph of log to base 2 of absolute value of x minus 2 minus 1. And we're to find the interval where the graph is what is below the x axis. So let's begin. Um, to number one, we're going to do it in two, two ways. We're going to use the graphical method first. Now, and we're also going to use the algebraic method. So just one way, it's okay. You don't have to do both. Now, graphical method, we need, just need to graph this function f of x is equals to x, I mean, 2 over x minus 4. And we know definitely x cannot be equals to 4. So to graph this, what we can do is that we know we have a vertical asymptote at where? At x equals to 4. And we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals to what? 0. Because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So, and we also see that this graph will not have an x-intercept since the numerator is just 2. It's just a number. So this graph is just something like uh, this. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals to 4. Now, this vertical asymptote divides the x inter the x axis. x axis means minus infinity to infinity into about four, three, three parts. The first part is between zero, in minus infinity to 0. You can test the value. Use test points. For minus infinity to 0, you can take uh, minus 1 and try to check what is f, f of minus 1. If you look at f of minus 1, what do you get? You'll get 2 over minus 1 minus 4, which is 2 over minus 5 over 2. This is a negative number, so we know that the graph is going to be somewhere here. Now, between 0 and 4, take a test point. Take a test point, you can take like 1. If you take 1, what is f of 1? f of 1 is going to be 2 over 1 minus 4, which is 2 over minus 3. It's still a negative value, so we'll still be here. So between uh, 4 to infinity, let's say you take 5, you find f of 5. What is f of 5? will be 2 over 5 minus 4, which is 2 over 1. So f of 5 is positive, so it means your graph is going to be somewhere here. Then we can use the fact that we know that what the horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote. So we'll have something like this. And uh, here as well is going to be something like this. We cannot cross the what the vertical asymptote. So with this, we have our graph. And now, what so can we do? Uh, we use the a horizontal line. I will see that the horizontal line only cuts the curve just exactly at one point only. Um, so it means that this graph is this function is one to one. So we can say by the horizontal line test, our function f is one to one. So for the algebraic, if you want to use the algebraic method, uh, what we can do is to say, okay, let's f of x1 be equals to f of x2. And that means that what we have 2 over x1 minus 4, it's equals to 2 over x2 minus 4. So with this, we can uh, 
you can cross multiply so that you have two bracket x minus four x1 and two bracket x2 minus four uh, this will give us uh, this will give us two x1 minus eight and this is two x2 minus eight as well okay and so this means that 2x1 this will go with this so 2x1 is going to be 2x2 so x1 is equals to x2 so therefore f is 1 to 1 okay so then the b parts what is the b the b says find the interval where f inverse lies above the x-axis so this is a and so we want to answer the b so to answer b we we can find first of all we can try to find uh we can try to find f inverse itself uh, don't forget that f of x is what is 2 over x minus 4 so definitely x cannot be 4 here so we call this to be all y and this is 2 over x minus 4 so we have this that's equals to 2 so xy minus 4y is just going to be 2 um, okay so what do we want to do now we are solving for the inverse right so here we can interchange x and y we can interchange x and y even at this point if we like or we can just interchange from here before we try to to do to multiply so we can interchange x and y then we'll have x minus 4y it's equals to 2 so xy minus 4x is going to be 2 so xy is going to be 2 plus 4x so y is 2 plus 4x over x so this is our f inverse of x which we can write as 2 over x plus 4 yes so definitely x cannot be 0 in this case so we can try to graph this function if you try to graph this function you will see that this function is just what is just the graph of 2 over x shifted vertically upward at 4 so this is going to be like this y is equals to 4 and uh, we will have this to be the horizontal asymptotes so this will be the graph of 2 over x plus 4 and now if you look at this graph you see we have a horizontal asymptotes and uh, this graph you see it has what it has x intercept and we know that the x intercept will be the zero of the numerator because it's a rational function yes and what is the zero of the numerator here if you set 2 plus 4x to be zero you will get x to be minus half so this is just going to be minus half here that is the only x intercept we have and uh, since we are looking for where this graph is below the x is it below the x-axis or above the x-axis let's go back to the question lies above the x-axis so now this part also lies above the x-axis from here to here so it's just going to be minus infinity minus half union this side already is above the x-axis so this is like from zero because this is zero then going to uh, going to infinity so this is where the graph lies above the x-axis okay now there's also another way to solve this this same problem the second method without graphing so let's try to do that let's let me get another pen so this is the second method another method 
you just need to make your what f inverse of x to be what greater than zero and what is that it means you need your 2 plus 4x over x you want it to be positive so you use the critical value method so critical value here is the zero of the numerator uh, which is minus half and then the zero of the denominator which is x equals to zero then you can use your number line uh, this is minus half this is zero but minus half has to be open, zero also has to be open. Uh, this is simply because of what? This is simply because the we don't have equal to zero here, and x cannot be zero because we have, if you have zero in the denominator. Now you take test point. If you take test point, you take, for example, take a number between minus infinity, this is minus infinity and infinity, if you take let's say minus one and you substitute minus one into so we have our factors here so here is just going to be negative negative and this is going to be positive right so now if you take minus one and put here two plus so that you have two minus four this is going to still be negative if you take like minus 1 over 4 and put here, uh, this is going to be 2 plus, you have 2 plus 4 minus 1 over 4. It's just going to be 1, so it's going to be positive. Then you take a number between 0 and infinity. You take like 1, put 1 into the first factor. It's still going to be positive. So minus minus here is positive. Positive minus is minus positive positive is positive so since you are interested in the part that is greater than zero you take the positive part which is just minus infinity to minus half union zero to infinity okay so now let's go to number two number two we want to sketch this graph and we want to find the interval where the graph is what is decreasing so we're going to start with uh, let's start with the graph of we can start with the with the graph of 2 minus x and this graph is going to cut at where at 1 because it's decreasing because 2 to power x is the same thing as half to power x and you can see our a here is what is between 0 and 1. Now we can do we can do what a horizontal shift a horizontal translation. Remember we are looking for this one first which we can write as 2x plus 1, right? You can see that this is the same thing as 2 minus x minus 1. So since here is plus, it means we have to shift one unit to the one unit to the left. So it means we'll go horizontal translation, one unit left. So if we do one unit left, this point here, which is zero one, will become somewhere here. We'll have somewhere here, this will become minus one. And we will have this graph still going this way. Okay, so this point is 1, and this is minus 1. So this is the graph of 2 minus x minus 1. Then we have plus 4. So, no, not plus 4 yet. We have a minus here. Look at the minus behind it. This minus behind it. So we need to reflect everything across the x-axis because of the minus there. So this will this point now will become somewhere here. It's going to be at minus one and one because we are reflecting it here. So we're going to have something like this. Something like this. Okay, so this is supposed to be uh, a good reflection. better this way 
so this is our point minus one and minus one now we have to go for units up for units up means that vertical translation so we, it's going to be something like this now once you go for unit up don't forget that this is what um, this is minus one one if we go unit up now this point is going to be what is going to be three yes it's going to be three because here it's minus one so if you go to here it becomes zero so you need to take it four then this will be something like this one uh, let me go a little bit to the right so that i have more space so this will be here i will have something like this yes so this point now is still going to be minus one and what and three so this is still our minus one okay so this graph is which graph and here you can see that our horizontal asymptotes is still four so this will go something like this and here you have y it's equals to four as the horizontal asymptote but you see that we have a part that is below the x-axis then we have to take it up because we have everything inside the absolute value so this part which is the all the part that is below the x-axis we have to reflect it up something like this and uh, don't forget that it's it will cut our horizontal axis our horizontal uh, asymptote which is okay so now we need to remove all the parts which is below the x-axis so this graph is our absolute value of minus 2 minus x minus 1 plus 4. so so what we need now is to find what is this x-intercept and what is this y-intercept so let's start with y-intercepts y-intercept we just need to put x equals to what zero and if you put x equals to zero you just like looking for f of zero this will be minus two minus plus four and this is going to be minus half plus four and what do we have this will be uh it's going to be seven over two in absolute value which is just 3.5 so f of 0 is 3.5 uh, it means uh, this part is just going to be about 3.5 that is where it cuts now the y x intercepts i think the x intercept is very important because we need that to determine our interval so x in intercept is when y is equals to what when y is equals to 0 so y equals to 0 means we will have 0 it's equals to absolute value of minus x minus 1 plus 4 and this means that 0 is equals to what we have this one because if you have absolute value equals to 0 it means okay what is inside the absolute value is also 0 so this is minus here we take it to the other side becomes this and this is what this is four and now we can write this as two minus x minus one and we can write this as two square so we can drop the base and go with the powers so this will be x equals to what you take minus x take it to the other side and you have minus 1 minus 2 so x is what is minus 3 so it means the x intercept here is minus 3 
So with that, we can answer the question. The question is looking for the intercept where it is decreasing. So it means it's going to be decreasing at where? Just from minus infinity to a minus three. So you can see this is where it is decreasing. Why increasing will be from minus three to infinity. Okay. Now let's go to the last question. The last question is this one. We want us to graph this logarithmic function and we find the graph, the interval where the graph is below the what? The x axis. So let's start. Now for this one, what we need to do is we can start with the graph of what? log to base 2 of what? Absolute value of x. And what is this one? This is nothing but log to base 2 of x. If your x is positive, and log to base 2 of minus x, if x is what? Less than 0. So here, we don't need x to be 0, because if x is 0, the logarithm of 0 is not defined. So here, now let's start with this. What does this mean? It means that we will have something like this. This part is one. This is the log to base two of x because our two is greater than what? Is greater than, than one, right? And uh, the other side will just be this one. Here will be minus one. And what is this? This is just log to base 2 of minus x. So this is the reflection, right, of this one across the y-axis. So these two graphs put together give us the graph of what? Log to base 2 of absolute value. Now, we need, we have since we have minus 2 here, it means we have to shift everything. Two units to the what? To the right. So here we're going to have a what? A horizontal translation, two units to the right. Okay, so two units to the right, what does that mean? It means this one. So this used to be one here, this is one. If I move two units to the right, it will be at where? At three, so it means it's going to cut at where? At three. Okay, now this is minus one. This point is minus one. If I move three units to the right, it means it's going to cut at where? It's going to cut at one somewhere here. But our vertical asymptote is now shifted to where? To two. So this is two and this is one. Okay. Now, we are not done yet, so this graph here is nothing but log to base 2 of x minus 2. Now, we need to have what? We need to have one unit what? Vertical translation, one unit down. So, what does that mean? It means that our point will have to shift again. Take a look at this point. This point is what? Is 1 and 0. Okay, so since it's 1 and 0, and we want to shift everything down, instead of 1 and 0 now, it's coming. the point here is going to come down. I mean, this point here, this x-intercept is going to move down. It's going to become minus 1 here. So it's just going to be 1 and minus 1. So it means your graph is going to cut at this point. And also, this point where it is cutting here will move down. So it's moved down also one unit. So it's going to be something like this as well. Okay, so this is now our new point this is three here okay 
Now, what we need to know is that the vertical asymptote will still remain the same. The vertical asymptote will not change. So we still have x is equals to 2. But the only thing that would change now is the x-intercept. Because here you can see the x-intercept was 3, 0 and what? 1, 0. But because we've moved the point down, so it means this is going to cut somewhere else here. And this one also is going to cut somewhere here, but we don't know exactly where it's going to cut. So that is where the x-intercept is important. So let's try to get the x-intercept. So x-intercept, it's simply by putting what? y is equals to 0. And if you put y equals to 0, what do we get? We have 0, it's equals to log to base 2 of x minus 2 minus 1. Just take 1 to the other side. You have 1. It's equals to log to base 2 of absolute value of x minus 2. And now, this we can solve it. It's a logarithmic form. This becomes 2 to power 1. And this is x minus 2 in absolute value. We just move from the logarithmic form to the exponential form. So this is 2, and this is absolute value of x minus 2. And uh, what does this mean? This means that what? x, we can remove the absolute value. So we can say x minus 2 is equal to 2, or x minus 2 is equal to minus 2. So this means x is equal to 4, or x is equal to minus 2 plus 2, 0. So this gives us the x-intercept. So definitely, this is telling us that this is going to be 4, because already we know this is 3, and the other one is 0. So this is going to cut at the origin. So this is going to cut at the origin here, something like this. And definitely, that origin will be our y-intercept. But let's see what is the y-intercept. If you want to find y-intercept, just put x equals to 0. Uh, remember, the function itself is what log to base 2 of x minus 2 minus 1. So if you look for f of 0, which is the y-intercept, we will have log to base 2 of what? 0 minus 2 minus 1. And this is log to base 2. 0 minus 2 it's minus 2, so you have absolute value of 2 minus 1. But what is absolute value of 2? It's still 2 minus 1. Log, two to base, log to base 2 of 2 is 1, so you have 1 minus 1. And this is what? This is 0. So it means that this graph, this is the y-intercept and also the x-intercept at origin, at 0, 0. And the question wants what? The question wants us to find where it is what? Below the x-axis. Below the x-axis. So for below the x-axis is this. If we look at the graph, where are we below the x-axis? This is 0. So we are below the x-axis between 0 and what? And 2. Remember, 2 is not in the domain of the function. So 0 and 2. So let me use... Uh, so here, we are below the x-axis here. This, And what is this? This is between 0 and 2. Open. Union. Here also, we are below the x-axis here. And what is this? From here to here, which is... Remember, when you say below, we are looking for the x-value, not the y-value. So it's going to be from here, which is 2, to 4 which is also open. So 4 is open because at 4, you are on the x-axis. 0 is also open because at 0, you are on the x-axis. But we're interested in below the x-axis. So this is the interval. So I hope these uh, solutions are clear. If you have any questions, just put it in the comment section. Uh, thank you for watching.